Hi folks and welcome to the screencast on cloning. You may have heard of cloning in the news or even in science fiction lately, but cloning is not a new thing. It's been around ever since life existed. It's the way that some simple living organisms actually reproduce themselves, a form of asexual reproduction. And it's done simply by cells budding off from the original organism and developing into a brand new one. Starfish and worms can do this. You may have heard that if you can cut a starfish or a worm in half just right, that you can actually get two starfish or worms out of that. The process is simple in theory, but when we've taken this into the laboratory, we found out that it's actually quite complicated. Lots of questions needed to be answered. A clone is a copy of something. In genetics, a clone is a genetic copy of another organism. One of the first successful clonings of a large mammal was back in 1996, a sheep named Dolly. She was cloned from an adult sheep by a company by the name of Scott's. And they had only one success in 300 tries. Dolly grew to maturity and successfully had a lamb by natural means in 1998. But Dolly seemed to be prematurely old and died in 2002. Cloning of this sort has been done in, on cattle, pigs, and mice. The, the success rate has improved considerably. Cloning humans begins to show up in science fiction around the 1970s. Cloning humans is now a realistic possibility. However, the techniques and the ethics surrounding human cloning still need to be worked out. Let's take a look at how this is actually done. In order to clone, you do need an egg cell from a parent organism and a donor cell. The donor cell needs to be a somatic cell, that is a body cell that has a complete set of chromosomes in its nucleus. The nucleus is taken out of the egg cell and the nucleus from the somatic cell from the donor is actually fused with the egg cell. Using the proper naturally occurring cell signaling molecules, the egg is signaled that it has been fertilized and begins to go through mitosis and develops into an embryo. That egg is implanted back into a foster mother and allowed to develop. That lamb is genetically identical to the donor. In other words, it's an identical twin to the donor that's been born many years later. We now realize that each specialized cell in the body has all the genetic information, but much of it's been turned off. The cells of your eye have different genes turned on in them than those in your liver or your skin or any other tissue in the body. Cells become specialized by turning certain genes on and certain genes off. The problem for geneticists who wanted to do cloning is how do we set, reset this program so that all of the information is usable again? So why do we do cloning in the first place? Well, if we can clone adult animals or plants, breeders know exactly what the traits in the offspring are going to be. So the traits in the offspring are not left up to chance. If a breeder finds an organism with all the desirable traits, simply cloning them will ensure that they get those traits in the offspring. Since cloning allows making a genetically identical copy of the desired plant or animal, or sometimes just even one gene. Here's how it's done. Remember when we talked about restriction enzymes being able to cut out specific segments of genes? Well, these same restriction enzymes can be used to locate a gene of interest. Once that gene of interest is cut out from a, from a donor, it can be placed in a bacterial plasma. The strategy is also to include a gene for resistance to antibiotics into the plasma. The bacteria that gets the engineered plasmid with the gene of interest and the antibacterial gene in it can fight off antibiotics. When that plasmid is added back to a culture of bacterium, that bacterium is allowed to grow in a petri dish that has agar in it. The agar is the food for the bacterium, but the agar also has an antibiotic. Now the antibiotic kills any of the bacteria that didn't successfully take up the plasmid and allows the scientist to culture only those bacterium that took up the gene of interest and the antibiotic gene. It's a way of purifying the culture. Now those bacteria will also produce the protein from that gene of interest. This is, this is exactly how it's done today. 
and it's how they clone individual genes. The proteins made by those bacteria can then be used for treating diseases in humans. There are some concerns about cloning. As you can imagine, this is uncharted territory, and most of them are ethical concerns. First of all, the success rate from adult animals, animal cells is still rather low. Many mistakes are made, leading to the possibility of creating individual organisms that are not completely formed. This would be unacceptable for cloning humans in most societies. The evidence suggests that the clones which survive are still not right. There are some things, and we'll talk about this in class, there are some problems with the chromosomes that we still need to correct in the laboratory. The genetic program has probably not been completely reset. We still don't understand everything that we're doing when we're cloning adult cells. So that's genetic cloning. I hope you know a little bit more about the concept. We'll do some activities in class to help you strengthen your understanding of the concept. If you have any questions, bring them back to class and we'll see you then. Thanks a lot.